Hello, my name is Varun and I'm here to introduce the new entry-level student FPGA board from Digiland, the Basis 3. The Basis 3 has the Xilinx 7 series FPGA, the Arctic 7, designed specifically to work with Vivado Design Suit. The Arctic 7 FPGA is optimized for low cost, low power, small form factor. Today we will use the Basis 3 to run as a calculator uh, which performs the arithmetic operations of difference, modular function, division, sum, and product. The five push buttons on the basis three will be used to choose which function we want to implement. The slide switches will be used as inputs. The outputs are displayed on the seven segment LED display. Now let's start Vivada. Vivado is a good tool because it gives you a, a complete programming solution from concept, design, and programming, including running behavioral simulation and debugging. It has faster implementation and integration times, uh, and a 20% higher optimized quality of results compared to ISC. So let's start our Abacus project. This is the Vivado start page, and you can create the new project. You can choose the location of your project and make sure that there are no spaces in the project location and the project name. Let's call this basis3 intro. This is an RTL project. We do not specify sources at this time. Choose your FPGA family part numbers. You can go back to the basis3 board screenshot. You can zoom in and Look at the part number, the family, the device number, and the speed grade. Using this information, we go back into Vivado and select our FPGA. The package number would be CPG236, speed grade 1. And between the two final options, the first one is our board. This will create your project and give you the main Vivado tool homepage. We have your flow navigator, the project summary, and the design runs console. These are the three main windows in your homepage. And the flow navigator is used to create your block design, add sources, run simulation, start your synthesis, implementation, and also create your bit file, and then program it using the hardware manager. The project summary will give you the status of your project. Let's start with adding constraints. Vivado uses XTC constraint file. That's a Xilinx design constraint file. It's, it is like the UCF file if you have used the uh, Xilinx ISC before. They have their fundamental differences, the UCF and the XTC. But for all practical purposes for our design, uh, you can add the XTC file and choose the pins, ports, and objects, and signals that you want to activate for your design. So let's go to add sources, add or create constraints, add files, go to the location, and also make sure there are no spaces in the XTC file name. Go OK, finish. And this would bring up the master XTC file. Next, let, let us add the design sources, which have been pre-built in Verilog HDL. These are my pre-built source files. You can select all of them together and import them into your project. You can note that by checking this, it would copy all the source files into your project location that you had just created. So you do not have to edit or change the original source files if you have to go back to them and use them again for a different project. And the project manager will add all the different sub-modules, the different uh, Verilog modules here. All these different modules are connected to the top module and taking a look inside the top module, you can see the top module inputs to the board and the outputs, the input clock, the five push buttons, the 16 slides with inputs, 16 LED outputs, and the seven segment display output. 
So these are our top module input and outputs. And once you go back to your master XDC, you will find the same port numbers and pin locations and pin names. Make sure that the name of the input and the outputs match with the pin names that you have in your XTC. So my clock signal is named clock, CLK, switches as W, LEDs as LED, and the seven segment display as SEG. So you can take a look, SEG, AN, and DP. So, and the push buttons B, D, and C. Uh, this is the valid pin name. So you should have the B, T, N, and the capital C or a capital U. You can select all the signals that we need for our design to this point and activate them by uncommenting them. Check your XTC file for any non pin information that is uh, something that's supposed to be a comment that is not commented properly. Make sure we have no errors there. Save the file. Now let us begin the process of programming the FPGA. There are two ways in which you can program the FPGA. One is using the bit file. We use the JTAG programming cable to load the bit file into the FPGA. The second method is programming the FPGA using the QSPY. For this, we need the .bin file, the binary file, to be loaded onto the QSPY. And when you turn on the FPGA, the FPGA will load the programming file from the QSPY, and you don't have to go through loading the bit file through the cable. So what you need to do is go into Tools, Project Settings, Synthesis, Implementation, and Bitstream information is here. You can go into Bitstream and check the bin file. So this bin file, the binary file, allows you to add a memory configuration file into your FPGA flash device. And when you do that, once you power on your device, you can just directly run your project and you don't have to program the FPGA all the time. For this, uh, let us set some device properties beforehand. To edit the device properties, this can be done in the synthesis design open uh, window or the implementation design open window. So instead of uh, generating the bitstream uh, at uh, one go, uh, let us run the synthesis first. This will generate both the bit file, the dot bit file and the dot bin file. The log window uh, is a good place to get a lot of information and find out which design run you're in. Now the synthesis has uh, successfully completed. Let us open the synthesis design. In the uh, synthesized design window, head over to tools, edit device properties, check for the bitstream compression setting, it's true. Configuration, change the configuration rate to uh, 33 megahertz. This is the uh, reliable, consistent configuration rate for the board. Go to head over to configuration mode. Choose the uh, quad spy mode. Close the synthesized design. Save the synthesized design. And now, you can head over to the program and debug section and generate the bitstream. Over here, you can take a look. It says the bitstream dot bit file and the dot bin file have been generated successfully at the same time with the device configuration settings that we have just made. Open the hardware manager, open new hardware target, click next, make sure the device is turned on, next again, 
you will see the FPGA part number at this place. Change the JTAG clock frequency to 30 megahertz. Select your device, click next, finish. The device is ready to be programmed. If you can take a look at the board, the uh, jumper is set to JTAG programming mode. And in that mode, you can program the device using the top module bit file. The top module bit file gives you additional information on when it has been created, the date and the time. This is handy information when you have multiple uh, bit file uh, generation done within uh, the same project. So you can keep track of uh, which bit file is the most useful one if you had to go back and make edits into your source files. So click OK and program that. Now that bit file is programmed into the FPGA and our Abacus project, uh, which is basically a calculator, is running on the FPGA. I will provide inputs uh, using the slide switches. So I have 255 and 255 on both my 8-bit binary integer numbers. Let's click the sum a push button that we discussed before. And you can see the result is 510 scrolling on the seven segment display. But let's go back and program the flash. So every time you turn on the device, the uh, FPGA will boot up through the QSPY flash. And you don't have to go through the uh, generation of the bit file and programming it through Vivado. So right click, add configuration memory device. Expansion, 32-bit is our part number. Let's select that. And note that this will erase any previously loaded configuration file on your flash. So select your bin file, and it has the same date of creation and time as your bit file because they get generated at the same time. Click OK. So it performs the erase operation, program operation, and verification in three steps. So the flash programming is completed successfully. And if you go back to the device, the JTAG port is used to talk to the FPGA, and the FPGA will take the bin file and program it on the flash. But for us to use the spy flash, you need to change the jumper settings. So this time we are loading, we're booting up through the spy uh, flash on the basis three. So change the jumper back and put it in to the Q spy mode instead of the JTAG, which it was previously in. Now if you turn it on, the FPGA will boot up through the flash device and you don't have to go through the hardware manager and programming the bit file setup. You can see that uh, the LEDs glow and the seven segment display is ready and running. And if I have my sum, I get my 510 again. Product 65025 of 255 times 255. You can also have division done. So let's take an example. So it's A divided by B. So my A input is 128. You can cross-check that by clicking that. And it's a good way to know what input you're giving if you're not so used to uh, thinking in binary digits. So it's 128. And let me have uh, the number 13 on this side. So that should be, so I have 128 added with 13 running. And the difference is 115. The division, by pressing on the button and holding it, will give me the quotient. That is 9. 13 times 9 is 117. And the remainder, the modulus function, is uh, displayed by holding on to the push button on the left, which would be 11. That's 128 minus 117. Let's do uh, a subtraction where uh, we subtract a larger number from a smaller number and see how that works. Let's take uh, eight and subtract eight from two. So 
adding 18 to is 10. That's a good confirmation again. And clicking on this would give me uh, 8 getting subtracted from 2. And you see a 6, but it should be a negative number, right? So pressing on and holding on to the button would show you the negative sign, indicating that it's actually a negative result. That's a minus 6. So 2 minus 8 is a minus 6. This is how you can have a basic calculator, uh, arithmetic uh, operations uh, done using the basis three board. One thing I like is all the 16 slide switches uh, that we have here, uh, which allows us to give a lot of inputs. So I, could, I was able to do 8-bit and 8-bit uh, arithmetic operations. So have fun with your new basis three, and good luck.